Powerful prayer on this morning from Pastor Dow. I felt that, and it was a, just a blessing because I needed that this morning. Amen. But I first want to give honor to God, who's the head of my life, um, to Pastor Dow and to uh, Minister Griffin and, and to uh, First Lady Dow on this morning, and to all um, the deacons and all the brothers and sisters in Christ. Amen. This morning. I have came with the word on this morning from the Lord. Amen. Amen. And some of you all was on my topic this morning. Hallelujah. Look how God works. Amen. I ask you to pray with pray with me as I deliver this word on this morning. Every how every head is bowed, every eyes closed. Heavenly Father, God, we come to you now, God. Just wanted to you thank you one more time, God. God, give me a word to give to your people, God. God, move Xavier out the way, God, and you have your way, God. But most of God, we just want to just tell you thank you, Lord. Because thank you makes room for God. And so the more we thank you, the more healing you give to us, Lord. The more we thank you, the more blessings you give to us, God. But God, I ask you to touch your people like never before, God. Because they're in the time, they need you right now in the time of trouble, God. And God, we know that you're able to do exceedingly abundantly above all things that you can ask for or think. God, we just want to praise and magnify your name this morning, God. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen. and amen. amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. As I um, prepare for this uh, message on this morning, we're going to go to Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 through 12. Amen. And when you have it, say, I, I love the word. I love the word. And once you have it, I ask you to stand Amen. for the reading of the word. Chapter 6, verse 10 through 12. All right. Thank you, Lord. Wow. Hallelujah. Wow. Let's, uh, we're going to read it together. Amen. Amen. All right. Let's go ahead and start from verse 10. Finally, my brother. Be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rules of the darkness of this world, against spiritual witness in high places. Bless the readers and doers of his word. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. If I had a particular uh, topic for this message, it would be understanding your enemy. Amen. 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 Understanding your enemy. I realize in this season and in this time, we are going through some trying things. Amen. Amen. But I, I realize in this time that the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And he, he he's trying to trick us and trying to distract our lives from getting to what God has blessed us to go to. Amen. But I, I come to let you know this morning that God is about to trick your enemy. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. God is about to trick your enemy. What are you saying, Minister Tippin? I'm saying is that the enemy has thought he has got you and that he has taken you away from the anointing of God. Well, I come to tell you that God said, I'm getting ready to trick your enemy. Because God is so powerful, the enemy doesn't know what's his next move. Hey Amen. But I come to let you know that the enemy inside your mind. Sometimes you have to pray over your mind because the enemy will try to attack your mind. The mind is a powerful thing. 
If you don't understand, the mind is a powerful thing. And whatever you think, if you let the enemy get to your mind, he has got a hold of you. But you have to know and pray and say, God, for I live and for God, I die. Uh, but I come to tell somebody that God is getting ready to trick your enemy. This is not the time and the place and this is not the season to disencourage the people of God. Right. But this right. is the time and the season to encourage one another yeah. and tell each other that we can make it. Because there's so much going out in the world today. We don't know if we're coming or going. We don't know from season, from hour, or from day. But, but just know if you stay hold on to God's unchanging hand, everything will be all right. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, understand your enemy. You have to understand your enemy because sometimes your enemy could be one of your family members that the devil has got a hold of. Uh, do I have a witness in the house this morning? Sometimes the enemy will use your family members to get you off track because God has already anointed you to live. But the enemy will try to hit one of your family members to distract you from the blessings God has for you in store. Y'all hear me this morning. But I come to tell you, you have to understand your enemy. Uh, sometimes... God, the enemy will even use one of your so-called friends and say they're for you, but they'll be against you. They'll be in your face and telling you they love you, but they don't love you because they don't even show it. Love is an action word that you have to show that love. You can tell me all day long that you love me, but then you back there talking about me don't mean that you love me. Ah, hallelujah. But I come to tell you, you have to understand your enemy. Uh, even the enemy, we even try to come into the church to use some of the church members to, to be against the pastor. But I come to tell you this morning that if you just hold on until God's unchanging hand, if you just stay prayed up, the devil has to flee from you. The problem is, is that we have got away from prayer. And that's the reason why the enemy comes in the way he comes in. I'm not giving the devil any credit this morning, but I'm just going to tell somebody, you've got to stay prayed up because things out in this world now, you got to pray and you got to know your word for yourself. How's our word in thy heart? Because I realize one day that they're going to take our Bibles and some of us ain't going to know the word. Understand your enemy. Hallelujah. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, God is with you in the battle. I realize we're in a battle in this season. We're in a war spiritually, not physically. I have been in revival this week at Mount Zion. Went to revival and they have been teaching about this means war. And so I kinda, I'm i going to kind of go there as well. But I come to tell somebody that this means war. And when we go to war, we have to have the whole armor of God because the enemy comes to attack you. But I come to tell somebody, if you just have the whole armor of God and get ready to fight. I'm not talking about with your fists, but you got to fight on your knees and pray. Sometimes you have to go into your prayer closet and say, God, I'm here. I need you in the time of trouble. But I come to tell somebody that even the enemy will even and use your children yeah. to distract you from what God has blessed you to live for. But I come to tell somebody the enemy will come into your children yeah. and they will talk up to you oh, like they're grown oh. and tell you what to do and you and their mother and their father. All right then. <laughs> the enemy. Yeah. Understand my, your my, my. enemy. Come on now. Understand your enemy. Mm -hmm. God is with you mm -hmm. in the battle. Talk, baby. I uh, understand that we are in the war and spiritually, amen? Yes, Lord. And we have to know that God 
has it all under control. All right. This battle is not yours. It is the Lord. It is the Lord. I heard people say that, but sometimes the problem is, is that we want to fight the battle right. and leave God out of the situation. That's why some things don't work the way they work because you don't have God in the midst of it all. But look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, it's in God's plan. We've got to go through some things in life because it's in God's plan. But I some for you this morning the gifts of pain. Yeah. We have to go through pain uh-huh. and suffering in this life because we said we gave our all to God and we said yeah. God for we live and for God we die. Yeah. So we made a promise to God that no matter what the circumstances are, yeah. I'm still going to live for you no matter how hard the situations get. Yeah. I'm still going to live for you. I don't care what time or what day the enemy comes. I'm still going to fight on my yeah. knees because I do know that the enemy does yeah. is not happy with you because you're getting ready to get blessed like never before. I'm going to tell somebody this week I have been struggling and striving trying to stay focused on the word of God. But the enemy came in and tried to attack my body. Made me feel so weak I had to go to the emergency room. But I come to tell somebody I had enough sense to pray to God and say God you got to, come, you got to take control of this situation. I can't handle this thing, God. I got to let you have this thing. I tried to do it on my own, but God, I got to let you work this thing out. Because I understand, God, if you work it out, everything will be all right. Hallelujah. If you just let God work some things out, I promise you everything will be all right. I realize in this season there's a safety in the shift. That's it. That's it. We're getting ready to shift into the place uh-huh. that God really wants us to be. Oh, and right. as I was sitting there, I heard Pastor Dow say, This little church, this is not a little church. <laughs> this is a mega church. And you have to uh-huh. have faith and you got to claim things because uh-huh. the enemy will try to trap uh-huh. things in your mind and let uh-huh. you feel so small uh-huh. that you can't even get big. Uh-huh. But I come to tell that enemy, you are not today, bro. Uh-huh. Because this is a mega church. I healing over this church and I see the house full but not only that I see even people in the balcony because you got to speak those things that's not good God Almighty understanding your enemy understanding your enemy understanding your enemy I realize this is not the time for us so called Christians and sanctified folks filled with the Holy Ghost talk about one another Uh but this is the time to uplift one another and we have to realize is that the people are hurting now out in the world but the problem is, is that we stand out in we stand in the four walls instead of going out outside the four that's walls. It, it. The people need us right about now, but we got to go out and minister to the people. But the problem is, is that the enemy. Yeah. And let me tell you, some folks think the enemy has won the victory, but that's a lie because the God said, "I'm going to let him fool himself," and and the enemy has set up traps for us. But God said, "In those traps, there shall be victory." to be yeah. and joy when you step into them. Uh-huh. The enemy has tra- stepped up traps to think he's going to catch you yeah, yeah. and keep a grip to you. But I come uh-huh. to tell somebody that God said I'm getting ready to bless you yeah. tremendously. There have been some people praying for some healing. There have been some people yeah. praying for some deliverance. Uh-huh. But the enemy seems like he has got your mind and yeah. he has tapped you so you even feel like that God can't even move because you have God the enemy has took your mind into a different stage but I come to tell somebody every new level there has to be a new devil so I come to tell somebody every time you move up the enemy comes even harder after you but you've got to pray even harder I feel my help in you but you have to understand it, your enemy. Good God Almighty. Yes, Lord. I understand in this season that the enemy has came in and tried to distract you. But I come to tell that no weapon for the 
against me shall be able to prosper. I got the will of the Lord on my side. I trust Him and try to for myself. Isn't He good, y'all? He's a good God. The enemy comes in like a flood, but God. 